What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 31 and before we get into today's episode I just want to say um, if this commentary sounds a little bit different it's because I'm recording it off a different microphone to the one I normally use. Um, as you guys are almost certainly aware by now, of course I'm moving house. I'll show you what my setup looks like right now. I'm basically recording this commentary lying down on my stomach on the floor. Very uncomfortable indeed. And uh, I'm using one of my old microphones to do it as well. So much of the stuff has already left the room now. So much furniture is gone. And uh, it's been a very, very frustrating final few days for me at the house having to sort everything out. But uh, anyway, uh, if the commentary does sound a little bit different, it's because I'm using a different microphone. I'll try and get the settings okay on it. But uh, that's why it may sound a little bit different to usual. Still, we take on Leeds for the first game of today's episode here with Watford in the Capital One Cup second or third round already forgotten as Leeds come and take us on at Vicarage Road. Of course we are the holders of this competition but coming into the game as you're going to see by the team I picked here on the back of that defeat to Chelsea I did decide to rest everyone in the squad and play a completely new first 11 out there. Obviously this season despite being the holders of this competition we're still not really that fussed about it to be honest. Got bigger fish to fry you know got the Europa League and uh, this season first season European football the Premier League as well aimed of trying to break into the top four. The FA Cup as well, which hopefully we'll be able to play this season. Capital One Cup is the least of our worries this year, even though we are the current holders. Still taking on Leeds and so many chances in the first half. A really action-packed first half. Both sides looking really good. We had the best chance there. Charlie Austin should have scored that rebound that was cleared off the line that was still goalless in this game. But in the second half, not much really happened, to be honest. The first half was really action-packed. So many chances to report. But in the second half, there was just that one which hit the crossbar, which meant the game did finish as a goalless draw and we're going to extra time so good first half poor second half the cliche is football is a game of two halves so can't be too surprised and we do go into extra time with a score still goalless and in the extra time period here the first chance would fall just three minutes in it came to us as Marco Ryan Tyler went down the left hand side but I completely messed this up did so well to beat the former Watford right back Paradez and then the finish I don't know what I was trying to do there was a simple save for the goalkeeper so still nil nil but the first chance for Leeds in the extra time would fall here in the 103rd minute and they'd score it as well. Some very very poor defending from me there. Letting Leeds just walk their way through into the box but a really, really good finish by Calvin Phillips who makes it what for nil Leeds won and the away fans can celebrate. So now this is just really poor. This is just straight passing into the box. Very, very poor and a great finish by Phillips regardless to make it what for nil Leeds won. So the championship side take a surprise lead here. Even though we were resting all the players I was still expecting to get through but we would go ahead and equalise in the 107th minute and would you just know it, the man that got us the equalising goal is a former Leeds player Lewis Cook gets his first goal for the club, he came in in last season's summer transfer window got a few get, uh, got a few games last season quite a few games he started last year for us and he's been growing quite nicely as well yet to score a goal for us though, not uncommon for a holding midfielder to not score in a season but he does get his first goal here and makes it Watford 1, Leeds 1, so back on level terms courtesy of the former Leeds man and we are back on level terms, so 1-1 one, one. great chance for us to take the lead here in 140 14th minute for the first time in the game. Leung goes for goal, but it's a great save by the goalkeeper, and eventually Leeds get it away. And it was how the game would finish as well. Final score after two hours worth of football. Watford won, Leeds won. Phillips opening the scoring. Lewis Cook equalising against his former club. And that would mean we would go to a penalty shootout. Yes, the first penalty shootout of the series. Didn't have any in last season's uh, season with Watford. So this is the first penalty shootout of the series. Pretty nervous for it. My record on penalty shootouts is pretty good offline. To be honest, online it's terrible. Can't handle the pressure. But offline it's not too bad. And the first penalty would be taken by... By us, but I just jinxed myself right there, didn't I? Barami is denied by Silvestri, and we missed the first penalty of the shootout. Not a great start for us. And then Ben Watson, one of our former players who I sold to Leeds, puts the ball into the back of the net and makes it what for nil. Leeds one on the shootout. So early advantage to the championship side. Obi Olari would get us off the mark in the second penalty we would take and make it 1 1 and equalize for us. And Tanucci then took the second penalty for Leeds, but sadly, once again, he went to the same corner. Well, sort of same corner. Sent game was the wrong way anyway clips the underside of the bar and goes in so Leeds perfect from the first two scoring them both we then equalise once again really good penalty there into the top corner to make it 2-2 and then 2-2 uh, sorry and then Dallas stands up for Leeds to take this penalty stutters puts Gomez off and again sends the Brazilian goalkeeper the wrong way so Watford 2 Leeds 3 Leeds perfect from the spot we were nigh perfect just missing the one penalty but that was a great one by Damari Gray to put us back on level terms Leeds then had this penalty through their number 20 and finally they do 
fail to score. Gomez may not make the save, but this shot cannons off the bar and eventually goes away. So Watford 3, Leeds 3. Then we then had the advantage for the first time in the shootout as Marco Ryan Tal held his nerve to make it 4-3. And that meant that the Leeds player would have to hold his nerve here. Otherwise, they would be going out and we would be going through on the shootout. So it was going to be a former Watford player to take it against Aurelio Gomez. But sadly, Gomez again goes the wrong way and Leeds stay in the shootout and take it to sudden death. First penalty of sudden death was taken by us and it was a perfect penalty too. Juan Fran, our right back, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way and puts it into the top corner. So once again, we put the pressure on Leeds here. They have to score from this penalty, otherwise they're going home. It was going to be Calvin Phillips who would take it. He scored, us against, uh, scored against us an extra time to give Leeds the lead and he'd also score from the spot as well. Gomez rooted to the spot, can't save it and it's Watford 5, Leeds 5 on the shootout. Now Michael Keane stands up and scores his penalty as well. So once again, we put the pressure on Leeds here. Again, it's going to be a former Watford player to take it as well. Paradez, who we gave to Leeds, I remember, when we exchanged for the Sion Byram deal. Paradez against Gomez. Can Paradez score? Yes, he can. Straight down the middle and sudden death continues. So now it's 6-6. Now Sam Byram, the former Leeds player, steps up and he also puts it into the top corner and still the shootout continues. So 7-6 and again, Leeds must score here to stay in the shootout. Otherwise, they are going home. So the shootout drama continues here at Vicarage Road. It's going to be Taylor to take it, the young left back for Leeds. Can he make it 7-7 or are they going home? No. Taylor sends Gomez the wrong way and the shootout continues. And it's a former player uh, for Leeds, Lewis Cook, to take it. He scored an extra time and he scores in the shootout again. Once again, the goalkeeper sent the wrong way and it's now 8-7. And again, Leeds must score. Otherwise, they are going out. A sudden death continues here and it's going to be Gomez against the Leeds number six as Cooper is going to take this one for Leeds. Can he score and keep them in the shootout? Yes, he can. Gomez goes to his left hand side and it goes straight down the middle. Gomez then stands up for us and it's saved by Silvestri. Our Brazilian goalkeeper has it saved by his opposite number and that means Silvestri for Leeds can actually win the shootout for the away side. Goalkeeper against goalkeeper again. Gomez trying to put his opposite number off but as you'll see Silvestri holds his nerve and leads knock us out of the Capital One Cup in an incredible penalty shootout where the away goalkeeper turns out to be the hero by not only just saving the penalty but also scoring the next one as well. So unbelievable drama here at Vicarage Road. Probably the most dramatic penalty shootout I've played in or certainly up there regardless. I actually won a penalty, bef uh, penalty shootout before uh, when it came down to the goalkeepers but uh, anyway as you can see Leeds did win the shootout 9-8 on the uh, penalty shootout. Unbelievable game. 1-1 uh, was the final score of extra time as well. 0-0 uh, after the first 90 minutes. But yeah, what a game that was. And it was just so, like, don't get me wrong, I was, I was so frustrated to go out and I was so frustrated to lose that game. But either way, I was just sitting there after the game thinking, I need to catch my breath because that was just incredible. But sadly for us, we do go out of the shootout. It's not really that big of a deal. Like I said, even though we are the holders of the competition, we've got bigger fish to fry this year. So we weren't going to be taking it seriously regardless of what round we're in. It's still disappointing to lose again. That's now our second defeat of Vicarage Road this season. But either way, it's one of those things. I'm not too fussed about it. And uh, at least if nothing else, if we go out, we go out in style with that incredibly dramatic penalty shootout. So we take on West Ham for the second and final game of today's episode here away at Upton Park, back in the Premier League. First chance would fall to West Ham, but Jack Butler made a really good save there and kept it gold. It's in the ninth minute. Another good chance for West Ham as Dimitri Payet plays it through towards Pedro Obiang. He finds Enna Valencia through towards Payet. Payet then finds Valencia and his shot goes just wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. So West Ham putting the pressure on early and again another great chance here five minutes later as Antonio goes down the left hand side for West Ham. The number 30 has the pace on the arm, keeps on going, keeps on going, gets himself inside, crosses to the far post and Dimitri Payet's header goes wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. So still West Ham nil, Watford nil. But in the first half an hour it was all West Ham. I just could not defend against them, couldn't get the ball off them. They were looking so threatening. Valencia then hits the post and Riedemann has to clear it away. Still goalless, but West Ham were looking like they would score at any moment as things stood. 
but it was still goalless. And they had another great chance here in the 40th minute as Zena Valencia finds Morgan Al um, Alfatana down the right-hand side. He picks out Dimitri Payet who goes for goal. And again, they can't hit the target and it goes behind for a goal kick. So at half times, you can see we had had more possession, but West Ham had, had five shots, two of which on target. And every time they came forward, they looked like scoring. In the second half, just a few minutes after the restart, again, it was West Ham causing me problems. Valencia going for goal and going very close there. That shot going just over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still goalers. And we would finally have our first proper chance of the game here as Buffal plays a great ball through towards Redmond down the left-hand side a few minutes later. Redmond collects the ball. Nice little spin to beat his man. Whips it across to the far post. Buffal wins the header. But our Moroccan playmaker puts it over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still goalless in this game as we went in search of a surprise uh, goals put us in front in this game considering how the game had been going. In the 70th minute, another good chance here. Trero drills in this cross of the centre. But what a save this is by the West Ham goalkeeper tonight. Etienne Kapua is near post. Great reactions there and it is still nil nil. And yet another chance for West Ham to score the opening goal of the game in the 74th minute. And Malfitana gets onto the ball and finds Mark Noble. Holds it up towards Andy Carroll. Back to Noble who goes for goal. And again it's Jack Butler making a good save and turning it behind for a corner. And it was how the game would finish as well. Final score Watford nil, West Ham nil. So despite a goal destroyer in this game, very action packed. And I have to say as well, if it wasn't for Butland, we wouldn't have got a win in this game. West Ham looked very threatening indeed. We had to weather the storm for the most part, especially in the first half. We did get ourselves a point though. I guess it's better than nothing and good to get our first clean sheet as well in quite a few games. But that does it in the episode guys, so thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like as that is much appreciated. It really does help my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.